If you were a kid in the 90s, chances are you at least knew about Are You Afraid of the Dark? It was a cultural phenomenon, at least in North America. I remember Saturday nights at 9.30, a whole half hour past my weeknight bedtime of 9 o'clock, huddled up in front of the TV in my parents' living room, the one that looked more like a piece of furniture than a television set, watching Nickelodeon's Saturday night lineup, Snick. Are You Afraid of the Dark was the last show on, before the clock struck 10 and the channel turned to Nick at Night, and things got really scary. If television sets could talk, then they would tell us the shows they like to play. They all agree for viewing the night. Be ready to to night. But yeah, I'd be sitting in the cold glow of the TV light, getting scared out of my eight-year-old mind for half an hour. Formative years, for sure. So imagine my surprise, almost 30 years later, when I discovered a PC game based on the series. Oh yes, friends, submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society. I call this story the tale of the Are You Afraid of the Dark adventure game. For those who maybe don't know, Are You Afraid of the Dark was a show that aired on US Kids Network Nickelodeon from 1992 to 1996. It had a revival in 99 with a brand new group of Midnight Society kids. Except for Tucker, Gary's younger brother, who takes over as the leader. And you can watch all the episodes from the first seven seasons on YouTube. I'll put a link to the channel in the description below. Yet another revival series aired in 2019, and that's gone on for three seasons so far. But the original is still the best. A group of kids who called themselves the Midnight Society met in the woods at night to tell scary stories around a campfire, tossing a mysterious white powder from an unmarked bag into the fire, causing enough of a reaction to put Smokey the Bear on alert. Don't play with matches. Don't play with fire. Yeah. Only you can prevent wildfires. Fire. Back then, we didn't know what that shit was. And I remember many a lunchtime argument with friends and even some backyard experiments of our own trying to figure out what they were throwing into that fire. Turns out, it was non-dairy creamer. So, there you go. Have at it. Anyway, each episode consisted of one tale told by a different member of the Midnight Society. You never got to know too much about the Midnight Society themselves. They all had one-dimensional personalities. Gary, the nerdy leader. Kiki the tomboy, Frank the tough guy, Betty Ann the girl who tells weird stories, Kristen the girl who likes to tell ghost stories, David the quiet boy with a mysterious expression, according to the Are You Afraid of the Dark wiki, and I can't read that line without laughing, and Eric the dickhead who disappeared after the first season, probably because he was a dickhead. There's a little boy in it who's afraid of the dark. Oh, you're dead meat. These were the original members. Some stayed for the entire duration of the show, but others came and went. And there were new members added to replace those who left, like Tucker, Sam, and Stig. Hi, babe. Oh. Some episodes had little through lines with the Midnight Society members, but the kids were really just a framing device for the anthology tales they told. It was one of the greatest kids shows ever, and it had some legit scary episodes under its belt. It wasn't pulling any punches, with some terrifying monster designs and creepy vibes all around. Some of the scariest episodes include The Tale of the Night Shift, about something stalking the hallways of a hospital at night. The Tale of Dead Man's Float, about a cursed swimming pool, which includes probably one of the show's most terrifying monsters. The Tale of Dark Music, about an old radio and a doorway in a basement that holds a horrifying secret. And this one probably has one of the most darkly comedic endings. There are a ton of others, like The Ghastly Grinner, Midnight Madness, and The Tale of Quicksilver. But my personal favorite was always The Tale of the Dollmaker, I don't know why. It wasn't the scariest, but it's the one that stuck with me the most, and the one I often think about when I remember the show. It's about a girl named Melissa who goes to visit her aunt and uncle in the countryside. Their next-door neighbors had a daughter named Susan, and the two girls had become close friends. But sometime between Melissa's last visit and now, Susan disappeared and her parents moved away. Now Melissa's aunt watches over the house, which has a unique architectural flourish. There's a door in the attic that leads nowhere. There's also a dollhouse up there, which is a perfect replica of the house. And you can probably guess where that doorway leads. So yeah, I guess the idea of a doorway in an attic leading to another world intrigued me. Though, like any long-running anthology series, there were a few duds, for sure. Now you've played laser tag before, right? Well, prepare yourselves to take the next step. You are about to enter the laser maze. 
and some truly horrific acting. I bet I know why, too. Why? I bet he likes to trap small children inside. And tickle them! <laughs> tickle, tickle, tickle! Here comes Seymour to tickle you! <laughs> Don't mess, or I'll bung you in the head. A lot of famous actors and actresses today had roles on it, too. Hey, Ryan Gosling and Gilbert Godfrey in the same episode. I told you this was the greatest show ever. So I made a teensy-weensy little mistake, and I was about to send an innocent young boy to his death. Why, none of you ever did that before. At the height of its popularity in 1994, Viacom produced an adventure game for PC, Are You Afraid of the Dark? The Tale of Orpheo's Curse. Before we dig into it, I want to give a special thanks to the Dungeon Dwellers who support me on Patreon and through YouTube memberships. They get to watch videos early, participate in occasional polls on what I cover next, and get updates from me. So become a Dungeon Dweller. Join us. More details on how to join at the end of the video. The tale of Orpheo's curse plays a bit like an extended episode of the series, and we get a story set up from Gary himself, leader of the Midnight Society, to kick things off. Do you believe in magic? Is magic only an illusion created by a stage magician? Well, there's an old saying, seeing is believing. Terry believed in magic, but her older brother Alex didn't. She loved visiting her great uncle Josh because he lived right across the street from Orpheus Palace, one of the last great vaudeville theaters. Okay, you got me to come over here with you. Now what? We try to get inside, dummy. Are you crazy? It's almost eight o'clock. Uncle Josh will be back from his meeting in an hour. He'll freak if we're gone. Well, I'm not afraid. What do you mean? I'm not afraid either. It's just I'm that... going. Are you coming or not? Wait. Terry! So there's your setup. Terry is a wannabe magician interested in this old, rundown theater where a magician named Orfeo used to perform. And Alex is her bitchy older brother. And these two hooligans decide to break into the theater one night. Right off the bat, there's a lot of flavor here. You can look at the various posters that cling to the fence around the theater, and Terry and Alex will have some back and forth about each thing. Their character traits are pretty stock, but I gotta say, the banter between them is decent. At least up to par with what the actual series had with its weekly characters. You're the magician, Terry. Why don't you wave your magic wand and open them? Shut up! There's a lot of foreshadowing out here for things that you'll see later on in the game, which is a nice touch. I want to point out the menus, which are presented as old-timey vaudeville posters. The attention to detail is so good, they really went above and beyond here. When Terry and Alex head around to the back of the theater, we get this great tilted shot of the alley, which was pretty impressive. Also, if you stay idle on certain screens, which I did a bunch since I was taking notes while playing, there are other sound effects and voice snippets, and sometimes even special events that will play that you wouldn't see otherwise, like this one. And here. Help me, please. Someone, help me. Did you hear that? Hear what? I heard a voice. Someone saying, help me. Terry, you're imagining things. Around back, Terry and Alex find the stage door, which opens for them, and inside the- Holy shit! I hate to say it, but this lady actually did make me jump. I wasn't expecting that shit. Next, we get a scene with the Midnight Society. There they all are. A headless ghost, yes! So what happens next? Do they meet Orpheo? That's gonna be up to our storyteller. That's you. I want everybody to meet someone who wants to join us. Oh yeah, Gary, I wanna join the Midnight Society. God, why did I not know about this game as a kid? Tell them what they gotta do to join. Ah, uh, Frank, I don't like that look, buddy. Better not involve any maple syrup. I tried joining that Camp Anawana one time, and those guys weren't fucking around. Hey, everybody! It's Awful Waffle time! Awful Waffle! Awful Waffle! Awful Waffle! Awful Waffle! The price of admission is a tale of terror. Oh, that's it? Alright, I can do that. Hey, can I be the one to throw the creamer into the fire? 
Aw, oh, Gary, you motherfuck. So back to the story. We finally meet Orfeo, and you've actually got two options here. You can turn around and head for the exit, which will make a trap door open, and Terry will fall into a dungeon-like area, and you'll need to solve a little puzzle to get to the Museum of Natural Wonders. Or you can talk to Orfeo, who will pretend to be all friendly while separating the siblings, escorting Terry straight to the Natural Wonders room. The first way is just a slight side trip, but it also sets up Orfeo very clearly as the villain from the start, while the other way just makes him seem like he's up to something. Very well. I will show you another way out. That door tends to stick sometimes, but please, perhaps you will reconsider leaving once I demonstrate what I can do. I assure you, you will be amazed. Watch this! Hey, where are we? Welcome to the Museum of Nature's Oddities, where seeing is believing. Collecting the unusual has always been a hobby of mine. How did you do that? Hey, wait a minute, where's my brother? Sometimes these tricks don't always work the way we expect them to. <laughs> Please, amuse yourself in my little curio room. I will return once I've found Alex. It's a cool bit of variation, and just further goes to show that they weren't just trying to pull off some cheap licensed tie-in. They really wanted to make a good game here. After this, Terry encounters a vengeful spirit, who we'll find out later is one of Orfeo's daughters, Mary. You will never see the outside world again. You are trapped here forever, and you will perish like all the others before you. <laughs> Alex. Alex. I can't believe I got us into this. From here on out, the game begins. It's typical adventure game style. Wander the different areas of the theater, listen to clues, collect items, solve puzzles, you know the drill. Some of the puzzles are kind of clever and involve really exploring your environment. Most of them boil down to finding keys or finding a secret exit to a locked room. But as you explore the theater, you'll learn more about Orfeo's curse and the assistants and side acts that wound up dead because of it. These characters appear as ghosts throughout, and most of them want to help you break the curse so they can rest. These are also your hint givers, so while most of the puzzles are simple, you've still got some characters pointing you in the right direction too. This was a game made for kids after all. Despite that, the game can get pretty creepy. The theater itself is made up of several levels with some inventive areas, like the aforementioned Museum of Natural Oddities. But then there's the wax museum, the prop room, costume area, makeup and dressing rooms, the stage and backstage area, catwalks and roof, a lobby area with three different levels, and the basement and maintenance areas. It's a pretty large game, actually, and there are several paths that you can take to get around, like they based it on an actual old vaudeville theater or something. It's impressive. There are shortcuts and secret passageways to open up, and keeping in line with Orfeo's special teleportation trick, you'll find teleportation boxes around that will warp you to different rooms and areas of the theater. Whatever you do, don't choose the skull button. <laughs> This sound happens later on, too, in a mandatory section where you need to grab a key. God, for fuck's sake! Some areas have illustrated backgrounds, while others look like they were sourced from actual photos. Like I mentioned before, there are tons of interactive elements as well. A lot of them are just for flavor, too, or to do something really weird or creepy that has no relevance to the main story. I appreciated these a lot, because it just added to the overall mystique of this place. And some of the areas were legitimately unnerving to be in, like the basement, with its creepy network of pipes, fans, and chain-link fences. The sound design is also pretty foreboding down here. Or when you reach the stage area and you can look out into the auditorium and see people sitting there. Later, you'll enter the seating area through one of the main entrances and find out that all these people are also wax statues. One scene with Alex has you entering the balcony where you're treated to this creepy dude on stage dancing and singing a hint to you about a later puzzle you'll need to solve. So you're caught up in a mystery, the scary tale of Orfeo and his curse. To solve it, you must be very clever, and the spell you're obligated to disperse. 
A really weird and creative way to give a hint. The music throughout lines up with what was typically heard in the background music from the TV show, so it gives it a real feeling of being in an episode while wandering around. Another thing that actually makes this game a bit terrifying are the chase scenes. There are several moments where you'll be attempting to grab an item or solve a puzzle, and a monster of some sort will appear. These are timed events, so if you take too long, you'll wind up back in front of the Midnight Society, who will usually chastise you for your mistake. That's it? You're not gonna end the story like that, are you? That wasn't much of a story. Hey, shut up. But afterwards, you'll be given several choices of where to pick up from, so you can jump back into things quickly, which is forgiving. To get the monsters off your tail, you'll need to solve some sort of environmental puzzle or get to a safe area. And some of them were honestly stressing me out. Getting chased by something is just the worst feeling in a game, but it's one of those bad in a good way kind of things, as long as they're well designed. And for the most part, Are You Afraid of the Dark nails this too. The puzzles you need to solve are pretty well telegraphed, so getting away from or trapping these bastards feels satisfying. Anyway, the headless lady from the beginning of the game is actually Felicia, one of the other performers at the theater, and she explains that to break the curse, you'll need to gather five items that belong to Orfeo that are hidden throughout the theater. His hat, his cape, his wand, his medallion, and his eyes. Ugh. And you'll have to place them on a wax statue of Orfeo that's in a room on the top floor of the theater. However, you only have until midnight to complete this task. At that time, a special stage show will take place. Orfeo's greatest trick involved his teleportation boxes, which were supposed to be able to teleport two assistants from one box to the other. However, things went awry in the past, which started the whole curse. The ghostly Orfeo now searches for new assistants for his trick, and Terry and Alex are the next candidates. If the clock strikes midnight, or the two get captured while exploring, Orfeo's show begins, and, uh, that teleportation trick ain't gonna go off without a hitch. <coughs> now, I didn't notice if there's an actual timer in the game if you take too long. There are various story events that occur where characters mention what time it is, but I'm not sure if you can fail just because you take too long. Speaking of time, I think it's about that time in the video where I start spoiling the story. The tale of Orfeo's curse is absolutely abandonware, and probably has no chance in hell of ever being licensed and brought back. So if you're interested in trying it out for yourself, my recommendation is to download it from the Collection Chamber, which is how I played it. You can find a link in the description below. The Collection Chamber features a huge library of abandoned games, so you should absolutely dig through their archives if you're interested in this kind of stuff. You can jump to this time, or use the chapter select to skip the spoilers. Or, you can just continue watching. The choice is yours. Alright, so, as I mentioned, Terry and Alex will need to find five items to break Orfeo's curse. Magic tricks won't work correctly on stage until the curse is broken, and performing the teleportation trick correctly is the only thing that will free the other ghosts. There are also these two sisters. You've already met Mary, the ghost who threatens you near the beginning of the game, but there's also Elizabeth. Orfeo's other daughter, who's not a psycho vengeful spirit. Both daughters acted as his assistants on stage. Elizabeth explains that Mary was actually the one who put the curse on the theater, not Orfeo. And we run across some evidence that clues us into that. And I mean, it's just stuff like, you know, tearing up a portrait of her father and her sister, trashing her sister's dressing room, and drawing a big star on the door of her own dressing room. Along with, you know, threatening two kids with an eternity of being stuck inside an old rundown theater. Little, subtle, passive-aggressive things. Turns out Elizabeth was always Daddy Orfeo's top choice for an assistant on stage, and this made Mary just a wee bit jealous. She turned the real Orfeo into a wax statue and sabotaged the other performers at the theater. In the room on the top floor, a hologram of Mary blocks the wax statue, and you need to burn a candle, which looks suspiciously like Mary, to get it out of the way. Which is... a bit weird. I mean, we already know that there are ghosts, so what's with this hologram? Why? At first I thought we were meant to think that all the ghosts in the theater were actually holograms, but... That doesn't make any sense. So yeah, I think it's just one final obstacle they put in your way to stop you from completing your main objective. So, eh, you know. Returning the five items to the wax statue of Orfeo brings back the real Orfeo. Just let me stick those eyes in there. 
So it turns out Mary was the evil Orfeo who was running around this whole time. Now that the curse is broken, we can perform the teleportation trick to free Elizabeth and set the other ghosts free. But Mary recovers from getting knocked out of her Orfeo disguise and chases Terry and Alex down to the stage where two teleportation boxes are waiting. Alex enters one of them and presses a button to bring Elizabeth back. This also frees the other performers and defeats Mary. But what the hell happened to Alex? But where is Alex? Where did he go? I don't know what to do. Alex! Wow. That's too bad about Alex. Creep me out. Okay, it's time to vote. The vote was 4-2 to two in favor of you joining, but as you know, it has to be unanimous. Sorry. What the f***? I didn't get in? You bunch of f***s. I'll f*** you and f as well. So yeah, you've got to save Alex if you want the best ending, and get into the Midnight Society. Luckily, like with most failures, you get the choice to start from a checkpoint. So how do we save Alex? Near the end of the playthrough, Terry finds a note on a wall that tells you how to do this. Back on the stage, once the other ghosts are free, push the two boxes together. This is a timed thing as well, so you need to act quickly. Afterwards, Alex returns. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> Excellent. Very scary, I liked it a lot. So, let's take a vote. Who favors inducting our friend into the Midnight Society? Me. Me too. I do. Thumbs up. Yes. Then it's settled. <laughs> Congratulations. Welcome to the Midnight Society. Yes. You better let me throw that creamer in the fire next time, Gary. So that's Are You Afraid of the Dark? The Tale of Orpheo's Curse. It's actually a tightly designed little adventure game. The presentation is excellent, the design of the theater is great, and exploration is fun. The puzzles are pretty clever, and there's a ton of extra stuff to find that are either fun horror gags that add to the atmosphere, or extra lines of dialogue that build out the world and the story. The tale itself was pretty entertaining too, with some neat little light twists, and two pretty good leads. Everything fell in line with a lot of the best episodes of the show. And there were even some parts that were legitimately creepy. It's clear the devs had a lot of passion, not just for the show, but for actually putting out a good game as well. I went into this not expecting much and was pleasantly surprised with how much I enjoyed it. I'm just bummed I didn't know about it when I was a kid. I would have loved this back then, but at least we can all experience it now thanks to the collection chamber. So with that being said, I declare this meeting of the Midnight Society closed. At least let me dump the bucket, Gary. Gary! And that's it for this video. Give it a like or a comment if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. More obscure games and indie goodness to come. I'd like to give a special thanks to some of the people who go above and beyond to support this channel on Patreon, and now YouTube memberships as well. If you'd like to join them, you can click the Patreon link in the description below, or hit the join button on this video page. All tiers get to watch videos a day or two before they're public on YouTube, and they also get access to exclusive posts and updates from me. If you donate at the $5 tiers or higher, you also get your names read out loud, like these Dungeon Architects. Benefer94 Izzy Lexus, Kyowa, Mr. Sunshine Jr., and Nekot the Brave, as well as these dungeon connoisseurs, Chiral Spiral, Crippler Jones, Dazed Clockwork, Dika Dika, Goats and Goblins, Joshua Weber, Mr. Independent, Old Dead Lemons, True Axiom, Warrior Song, Where Am I? Help, and Zach Diedrich. Thank you all for your support, and thank you very much for watching. Halloween videos are done, but that doesn't mean that there won't be more horror reviews in the near future. They're just kind of part of the regular rotation around here. But for now, Are You Afraid of the Dark? The Tale of Orpheo's Curse. Check it out. Dungeon Chill, out. So you're caught up in a mystery, the scary tale of Orpheo and his curse. To solve it, you must be very clever, and the spell you're obligated to disperse. 
Look for moving eyes and an image of the man The man with the top hat with the silver band Stand up very tall and touch the creepy eyeballs And point them looking up with your hand Touch those awful peepers with your hand Turn those icky eyeballs with your hand Once that is done, you will find a secret place. Then look for the crystal with a serpent's face. If you're brave enough, then you will solve the mystery. The scariest part about it is the truth. You will find the horrid, awful truth. The odious, abominable <laughs> truth. <laughs>